Let's continue with our discussions on flourishing financially. Flourishing financially. Second Kings chapter four, verses one to seven, New Living Translation. Second Kings four, one to seven, New Living Translation. One day, the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, my husband who served you is dead. And you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you, Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all, except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and daughters, with your sons, and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon, every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over. Flourishing financially, number two. Did you notice what the widow said? My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord. But now the creditor has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. The fact that you love the Lord, that you fear the Lord, that you serve the Lord, does not guarantee that you will be financially okay. I hope you can see that. There are two different subjects. And we established something basic last week. Money is only a means of exchange of value. Because in this time, we tell ourselves the truth because we're not in the business of deceiving ourselves. That you came, you sang, you worshiped, you danced, does not mean that your pocket would be okay. Money is a means of exchange of value. You've got to be selling something. In the last one month, <clears throat> you probably, you bought food. It's not probably, you bought food. <laughs> you made use of transportation one way or the other. If it was your car, you bought petrol, right? You bought fuel. If it was public transportation, you paid. You paid for electricity. You probably bought furniture, probably bought clothes, probably bought shoes. Whoever is selling those things took your money. Whether they speak in tongues or not. I hope Christians will wake up one day to realize that principles don't respect religion. Gravity is gravity. You jump from the roof of a 10 story building, you are coming down while you are speaking in tongues. You have to, you must sell something. So what did the prophet do? The prophet did not give the widow money. He gave her the power to sell something. Good. So let's pick three quick lessons from the story. So a friend told me recently how someone invited a friend, you know, I think to the dad's funeral or something like that, to an occasion, but the person could not come. However, the person sent money to the friend who was organizing the ceremony, the person sent money. So eventually when they saw the man that was invited, who could not come, but who sent money, was apologizing to his friend that he was really sorry that he could not make it. The man said, no, ah, now you come. Okay. <laughs> there, there is nothing to apologize for. You sent something. You are the one that came. The ones that carried their bodies and came but did not drop anything. <laughs> of what use was their coming? <laughs> now you come. <laughs> okay. 
I say that to point out something. Rich people value time over money. Rich people value time over money. Why? Scarcity makes time more valuable than money. You can make more money, you can replace money when it is lost. But time, once it is passed, it's passed forever. Unrecoverable. Two, you cannot make an extra minute. 24 hours is 24 hours. So rich people spend money to save time. Poor people spend time to save money. There's nothing wrong in you going by a road from Lagos to Abuja. Nothing wrong with it, especially if that's what you can afford. But at some point, you would need to make the decision. Because if what you are going to do in Abuja will take only 30 minutes, or say one hour, and you go by road, how many hours will it take to get to Abuja? Like 12 hours or so. So you go 12 hours, you do what you need to do, you come back another 12 hours. That if you don't sleep or do anything, so that's minimum 25 hours. And someone takes a flight, does whatever they have to do and flies back, and has more time to work with, okay? To, because time is a convertible resource. So the first thing I observed about the widow is that Elisha shifted her values. I want you to pay close attention to it. Your values are the principles or standards that determine your decisions and behavior. Everything does not rank at the same level with you. Career, finances, family, health, uh, vacationing, you know, Everything does not rank at the same level. The human mind ranks. So when you come to the point of making decisions, it is that ranking that will determine how you decide. It is that ranking that will decide what you will sacrifice for what. This widow came focused on what to get, acquisition. And Elisha effectively turned her focus from acquisition to contribution. One major reason why the poor parts of the world are poor and broke is because people are focused on self-centeredness. The capacity for sacrifice is very little. In fact, that's why leadership is warped. Because when you listen to what Christ said about leadership, Mark 10, 42 to 45, he said, you know that among the Gentiles, their rulers lord it over them, but among you, it shall not be so. I want you from today to pay attention to leadership. Pay attention to leadership in the church. Pay attention to leadership in the community and see how in alignment we are with what Christ said. Among you, it shall not be so. Anyone who wants to be the greatest among you, he said, let him be the servant. Anyone who wants to be first, let him be the last. He said, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a sacrifice for many. So you will find the most advanced parts of the world structure their leadership for service, not acquisition. But in our own part of the world, you won't even be respected. People will not follow you if you don't acquire. It's sad. Right? So without a shift in our leadership values, we're likely not to make progress. I'm sorry, it's not a curse. It's just principle. The salary of the president of the United States is fixed by law. It's $400,000 per annum. It's not hidden. Google it. As powerful, as wealthy as the United States is, if the US decided to pay their president $100 million per annum, that would still be chicken change because of how wealthy the country is. $400,000, period. Why? They want to make it clear. The office is not for acquisition. It is for what? Service. (laughs) 
if you do your job well, once you step out of that office, publishers are waiting for you. They will sign a book deal with you. President Clinton, Clinton, the first book out of office, they paid him $10 million up front when he had not written anything. The Obamas, it was multi-book deal. They paid them $60 million up front. It's principle, right? So pay attention to your values. Pay attention to your values. A shift in your values can create big shifts in your finances. When someone kills a human being in order to make charm for becoming rich, what does that tell you in terms of values? The person values money over human life. The person has signed a covenant with poverty, with wretchedness. Why? Because the human is the most valuable asset that God placed on this planet. So for you to take a life because you want to make soap, <laughs> or you want, you want to make some charm that will make you rich, they've turned your brain upside down. So the word values is derived from the word value. So if you don't have values, you don't have value. If anything goes, anything anybody asks from you is yes, yes, yes. No, you don't have no, you don't have boundaries. It's difficult for you to create wealth that way. Secondly, I said last week that when I asked God, is there anything in the Bible that can help people to get the money? That was when God led me to this passage. And he said, tell them, I will never allow you to get to the point where there's nothing around your life that I can use to move you to the next level of breakthrough. There is a jar of oil, maybe a talent, maybe a skill, it may be a relationship, there's, a, there's something. It's amazing, right? The second answer that God gave me was on the power of ideas. Because when the widow got to Elisha, what did he do? He gave her an instruction, a prophetic instruction, an inspired instruction. We're talking about value. The store of value that God uses to transfer value from the spiritual realm, in the, the invisible realm, to the physical realm is revelation. Revelation. Hebrews 11.3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made from things that are visible. Or, um, paraphrase, the raw materials with which God created this material world were intangible raw materials. The whole world knows that. Any society that innovates knows that, that it is ideas that you use to create. It's thoughts. So, settle this. They don't print money in heaven. God is not in the business of currency counterfeiting. They don't print Naira, they don't print dollars, they don't print Japanese yen, they don't print Euro, they don't print pound sterling. So you say, Lord, in Jesus' name, give me money. You won't see any cash floating down from anywhere. What they spend in heaven is what God will give you. And the currency of heaven is the revelation. That was what Elisha gave the widow. And it powered her out of debt. Revelation. All things are created twice. There is first a mental creation and then a physical creation. So look around you. There's nothing that has value that man has created. Microphone, speaker, not even this building. The design of the clothes you have on, your shoes. There is nothing that has value that man has created that did not exist first as an idea in somebody's mind. So if you don't play the ideas game, you are out of the game. 
So when you ask for money, what does God do? He gives you an idea, an inspired idea, an instruction that is equivalent to the money you are looking for. Because revelation is convertible. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, and the word became flesh. The word is intangible, right? Became flesh, became tangible. Describing how even Christ was transported from the spiritual realm into this physical world. The word became flesh, became flesh, became tangible, became a baby in Mary's body. So when God wants to give you one millionaire, he gives you revelation that is equivalent to one million. No, let me illustrate it a bit better. You need one millionaire. Your brother in the US, you know, has the money. You ask your brother to give you one millionaire. Do they spend Naira in the US? Do they spend Naira in the US? So what will your brother give you? Dollars. The equivalent of one millionaire. Thank you. Because the dollar is a convertible currency. Mm. So when you ask God for one millionaire, he will give you the currency of heaven equivalent to one million. And because most people don't know that that's how it operates, when God answers the prayer, they ignore it. They'll continue the prayer. <laughs> Jeremiah 33 verse 3, he said, call unto me. He said, I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. So when you pray, if you are not expecting ideas, you're in trouble. Because the way we've been taught to pray is for God to come and do it. They ask you, so how are you going to deal with that? And say, God will do it. And God is saying, leave me, oh. you want to turn me into your errand boy? You will do it. Listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> Follow my instruction. Make the phone call. Start the business. Go and meet that person. Call on to me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Vision. Vision is the key to provision. Break up the word provision. What do you have? Pro. Vision. For. Towards. The vision. So if you don't have vision, you are not entitled to the material equivalent, the provision. So from today, value ideas. So when I pray, I expect ideas. I expect an instruction. Christ used Peter's boat to preach. What did Christ give Peter in exchange? Was it money? No. Launch out into the deep. Luke chapter 5, verse 4, and throw your net for a catch. The man said, sir, this same sea, this same water. We toiled all night, we caught not. He said, nevertheless. Yeah, because I realize now you're not talking like a carpenter. This is a prophetic instruction. He took the net. Yeah, fish rushed inside because the word created the fish. Fish rushed inside and almost pulled Baba overboard. The fact that you have not seen something is not proof that it does not exist. It knows where to go. It knows where to go. So, in God's space, revelation is raw material for creation. And God said, and God said, and God said. One word from God, just one instruction, can change your financial situation. I needed some, quite a bit of money like that, <laughs> you know, earlier in the week. And I just knew, Sunday night, I had no idea. I just slept, because it's usually difficult to hear like that when your mind is stressed. I woke up Monday morning, and the Holy Spirit just gave me one, two, <laughs> like that. Money was complete in a matter of hours. Amen? So, that's why I wrote the book, Ideas Rule the World. When you give, it's the same thing. When you give, expect God to give you ideas and instructions. The third point from the story for our lesson for today. Take inspired Action. Take inspired action. 
the widow moved. Elisha said, go to your neighbors, borrow empty barrels. Don't borrow a few. Close the doors and the windows. He said, and pour from the small flask into the big jar. And the widow went and did it. Most people don't do. Reading the book, attending the service, hearing the message, that's the easy part. Once you become the person with action orientation, I promise you, you've cleared 50% of people. Because most people don't do. James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. Say, be doers of the word, not hearers only. He said, deceiving your own selves. So the gap between what you know and what you do is the measure of your self-deception. Too many potential multi-millionaires in church. Potential multi-billionaires in church. Until you move, God is not committed to move on your behalf. Newton told us in one of his laws of motion, all objects remain at a state of rest until what? A force is applied. In this world, nothing moves by itself. If you see anything moving, somebody moved it. At some point, I had to ask myself, I, I read the same book that other people read. Why do I get better results? Simple. They don't do. For various reasons. Number one, discouragement. They've tried before. It did not work. And Satan interpreted it. Something is wrong with you. Is it not the same thing you are doing that somebody else did? Why did your own not work out? You have special enemies. You have somebody's behind it. Not realizing that in this world, nothing usually works out perfectly the first time. When we were in school, they took us into the lab. Whatever it is we were doing, the titrating through the pipex and can, we mix chemicals together, you hear, shh, you see smoke. What did they call it? Experiments. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it will not work. They say it was experiment. Hmm. So even we knew that it was trial. So how come we grow up and we forget? that nothing works perfectly the first time that we're supposed to experiment. So what is it that you are using today, including medicine, that they did not run test after test after test after test after test before they finally found what worked? Who told you things must work out perfectly the first time? So that's why people don't try, don't, don't act anymore. They tried a little bit and then it did not work once, twice, and then they are discouraged. And then they conclude something is wrong with them. And then they conclude that the person that is getting better results, it is because things are working easier for them. That's self-deception. Not only should you act, you've got to act with persistence. Look at that widow. You think it was easy for her to do what the prophet said? He said, go to your neighbor's borrow empty barrels, empty drums. So if you were the neighbor, and she came and said, please, can you borrow? Do you have any empty drum in your house? Say, ah, me, I have two. Say, please, bring them. Would you not have been tempted to ask her, what do you want to do with them? Right? So if she said, eh, I want to pour oil from my small jar, what would you have thought? <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> This loss of her husband is really getting to this woman. No, oh, hey, God have mercy. <laughs> if you will act on your goals, if you will act on your dreams, if you will act on God's instruction, you've got to be prepared to look crazy to other people. but we live in a world that desperately craves for validation. Ah, the people that design these social media platforms, they're very creative, man. How did they create the concept of likes? 
Before you know it, you'll be transferring it to your personality. Nobody liked my post. So nobody likes me. You and post are separate now. Craving for value. So what will people say? If I try now and it doesn't work, hey, people will mock me. People will do this. Leave people. Focus. So at some point, that's why I said you have to define your values. At some point, you have to choose whether it is being like that is important to you or for you to break through financially. If people mock you, is that not normal? How many people are rich? Really rich? Is it not easier to be a spectator and to be mocking the person that is trying? That's why a lot of people are not rich. You do what you've got to do. When you get the results, you'll be surprised. The same people that mocked you, they will come. Congratulations. I knew you would make it. <laughs> Some of us is procrastination. I'll do it tomorrow. Make the phone call. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. If you, if you know what I'm planning to do, I'm planning to start a business. I'm planning to rent a shop. I'm planning to get an office. I'm planning to, that's what you said three years ago. I'm planning to, I'm planning to, but I discovered the world does not recognize you for what you are planning to do, but for what you have done. Mm. I've not seen anybody that they gave PhD planning to study physics. <laughs> Him to tell somebody sitting next by, do it. Don't allow small minded and fearful people to discourage you from what you want to do. Most of the time, they are not bad people, they are just fearful people. Fear, fear, fear. Do it afraid. When the Holy Spirit told me to go on radio, I was 27. He said I should teach people how to succeed. The first question I asked him was, <laughs> what gives me the authority to teach people how to be successful? Should I not be successful first? <laughs> he said it is not your achievement that gives you the authority to talk to people. It is the fact that I told you to talk that gives you the authority. Do it. Break the barrier. He said, what if I don't get the money? So if you got the money, what would you have done with it while you are sitting down? Your action commits God. What that woman did was crazy. You notice the prophet says he should close the doors and the windows. Yes. If you can, protect your vision. Do whatever you can in secret. Don't let people discourage you. Close the window, close the door. And the moment she took that small jar of oil against the run of reason and rationality, tipped it like this, miracle flow. Ah, I'm prophesying on someone here. You will be surprised. Yeah. When you act, do something you've not done before. Ask for what you've not asked for before. Go where you have not gone before. Make that phone call. You will be surprised. It will be easier than you thought. Yeah. Uh, the fact that the amen is low means people, some people still believe it will be difficult. <laughs> Even you will be surprised. Yeah. That's what happens to those of us that try. There will have been no day star for you to attend today if we did not dare. We left somewhere with a comfortable salary and official accommodation with furnished. When we moved from there, Pastor Nike and I and our daughter Sophie bought mattress and slept on the mattress on the floor before we started the star. You see, you see, oh. We're not sure how it will go. What if it doesn't work? How will you find out if you don't try? 
a, a senior minister that I respect and love so much, and who I know, you know, is Mutua, did not understand what was going on when I resigned from a former pastorate. On their poop, it mentioned my name, <laughs> you know, and said something negative about me. When this time was to start, we were on the out on the streets giving out flyers. I was on Allen Avenue. I wanted to give a gentleman the flyer. He said no. I said, but you should at least see what is on the flyer before you reject it. He said, I know what is on it. I said, eh, what is on it? He said, this is not about that, uh, Pastor Sam, you know, Adeyemi, who left. Uh, it's for my church. I said, eh, you, you actually know what is on it. <laughs> I said, I am Pastor Sam Adeyemi. He said, ah, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> I said, it's okay. And I, I discovered he did it because his pastor announced publicly and said something critical, negative about me. And me, I always do Bible. What did Jesus say in Matthew 18? If your brother has something against you, he said, go and meet him. I don't do cho-cho-cho. I, I sat down three hours at the reception of the pastor to see him. When I saw him, I said, sir, I heard you say so and so about me. He said, yes, I said it because he's also someone known for integrity. He said, I said it, I said, sir. Uh, that's not the whole story. He said, tell me your side. When I did, he said, I will not say anything about it again. And today, we're good. Amen. It can be hurtful, isn't it, to hear what people are saying about, about you, cho, cho, cho. People will always talk. If you do, they will talk. If you don't do, they will talk. Then give them what to talk. I prophesy on someone here today in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that has been a barrier to action, it may be mental, maybe spiritual, maybe physical, whatever it is, I declare its power is destroyed. Yeah. I receive for each person an infusion yeah. of divine inspiration yeah. and divine capacity. Yeah. I receive for each person an infusion of boldness, yeah. infusion of courage, yeah. To dare, Amen. to try, Amen. to move, Amen. to take action. Amen. Now prophesy by the Spirit of God. When you move, heaven will move on your behalf. Amen. I prophesy that there will be miracles. Amen. And as it was for the widow, someone is launched out of debt. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for the person that is a part of this service who says my relationship with God is not okay. I've got to be very honest. My relationship with God is not okay. I need God to forgive my sins. Lord, we know sin is the biggest problem between us humans and you. And you solved that problem for us already. You sent Jesus to die for us on the cross. And all you want is for us to just ask for forgiveness. And then our relationship with you starts from there. If you are that honest person, can you put your hand on your heart? Pastor, I'm a sinner. There's no point lying before God. I want God to forgive my sins. I believe Jesus already paid, died for my sins. I want God to forgive me. Can you put your hand on your heart as we pray together? Wherever you may be, at any of our locations, if you are online, also put your hand on your heart and please say this prayer after me. Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for everyone that said this prayer. And thank you because right now, their sins are forgiven. We're grateful. You promised us that. In fact, Jesus, you said there is celebration in heaven when this happens. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you because the nature of sin has now been removed from them. And the Holy Spirit has put your nature in them. We ask, teach them to know you personally. Teach them to love you and to love other people the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name. Someone say a good amen. Daystar, raising role models.